All right, so hopefully you can see just the one slide and not my whole deck, um, but we're going to walk through just a handful of slides uh, and then we are going to dig right in uh, to the inclusion toolbox. Now, this is the second year that we have uh, released the inclusion toolbox during Pride Month. Um, and our plan at BSN Sports is to continually grow the resources. So we started with three resources last year, and this year we added um, a fourth resource. Uh, and the, the plan is next year to add a fifth, but to always bring this back up uh, in the month of June so that you all remember that these resources are there for you. Um, you can use them in your classes, with your teams, um, wherever you engage with students, colleagues, um, and really just to, again, create those safe spaces uh, so that everyone understands that they are um, in a space that was designed for them, that they belong in, um, and that they feel safe in. And so we're going to dive in. Um, what we're going to also do is kind of walk through really briefly just a couple of things to level set where we are and how we um, at Varsity Brands um, came to this space in creating resources for students. Um, this is all powered by uh, the Believe in You team and all of the different divisions of Varsity Brands. Uh, we started this journey in 2018 with the Believe in You series and Kevin Atlas. Um, and at that point, we really started to see how powerful the Believe in You message was with students. And we wanted to expand it to include leadership and mental health um, and inclusion resources. And we wanted to be able to do this across all three divisions of varsity brands. So BSN Sports uh, is where we elevate uh, the student experience through sport. Um, we have Herf Jones, that's where we elevate the student experience through achievement, and then Varsity Spirit, um, obviously where we, uh, um, we elevate the student experience through spirit. Across all of those brands, we wanted one North Star that we could look to um, as we started to build out resources for Believe in You, and those became what we now call the Varsity Brands Empowerment Rights. Every time we build a resource, this is uh, the barometer that we we work towards. This is the North Star that guides all of the, the development work that we do. So there's five of these. Uh, we believe that everyone has the right to live optimistically. So this doesn't mean that, you know, we have toxic positivity and we're walking around happy all the time, uh, driving the people around us crazy. But what this means is we understand how important optimism is uh, for our development. And we put a structure in place, a support system in place so that when we lose our optimism, we have the tools needed to regain it. Second one, act on positive motivation. We believe that all of the emotions that humans ex experience are given to us for a purpose. They give us energy to take action. What we want is positive action and positive motivation behind those actions. Um, sometimes it's driven by the energy that we get because we're angry about something. And sometimes it's driven by the energy because um, we truly love our community or we're excited about an accomplishment. Either way, we want to make sure positivity is what drives those actions. Third, we believe everyone has the right to live with respect for self and others. Um, so that as we navigate through the world, uh, we feel like we can speak our truth. Uh, we can be ourselves um, and not have to mask that behind um, some truth that we've been told, um, negative truth that we've been told uh, elsewhere. So as we help students uh, develop self-respect, what we find is that they become adults that respect other people. And so our focus is there. Uh, we believe that all people have the right to communicate with a unique voice. Um, every single person has something to contribute um, if they are acting on positive motivation or living and living with respect, um, we want them to be able to come to the table with that unique voice that will add to the tapestry um, of our community. And then finally, we believe everyone has the right to make choices about how to share their greatness with the world. Every single human being has greatness inside of them. Um, it's our opportunity to empower that greatness uh, to give resources where resources are needed, to give space to explore the world, explore their greatness within that world. Um, and so the tools that we provide are really there to help you do that with your students. Um, and we also have done a lot of work with teachers individually 
you know, just as there are so many things, uh, financial education is one of those things that I feel like I could use remediation on sometimes, right? Um, there are all these different things. Emotions education is one of those things that we could all probably use a little bit of remediation on um, during given, you know, different times and challenges that we go through. So as teachers and educators and coaches utilize these tools, our hope is that um, they're there for you to remind you that, um, you know what, your greatness is important. And you as a teacher, as a coach, we want to empower you to share your greatness with the world as well. So those are the five varsity brands empowerment rights. This, that's where all of our work begins. Um, and where honestly, we were guided as that North Star. All right. I love this reminder. Equal rights for others does not mean less rights for you. It's not Pi. Um, so I was actually having a conversation um, with my daughter about this, and uh, she's 23 years old. Um, she is the perfect age to hold me accountable for all of the nonsense garbage that I've been saddled with as a middle-aged white male. And she just thought it was really interesting that here's a, um, uh, a webinar on inclusion, and I'm literally the most white, most middle-aged male um, on the planet, uh, according to her. And so um, it was interesting to her that I was giving this and she thought it was actually pretty cool. Um, and so I started to really have this conversation with her and I've had this conversation with my son as well. Um, you know, if we, if we take a look at, at privilege and everyone has different degrees of privilege and we, we look at it and say, you know what, we were born in this situation we certainly have privileges based on where we were born, the time we were born in, who, who our parents were. And we look at it as an opportunity. I have the privilege. Aaron Hart has the privilege to create Believe in You resources with the world. I have chosen to share my greatness with the world in the form of resources that elevate every human on this planet. Um, and I think it's really important uh, for others that look like me um, to get up and say that and say, I choose to use the privilege that I've been granted to elevate this world for every single child in every single school, in every single zip code. And I am ridiculously grateful that the companies of Varsity Brands have given me the space to share my greatness in that way. Um, so uh, a little bit of gratitude uh, across all of those and a gratitude for all of you um, on this webinar who have been supporting the work that we've been doing, uh, I know, for several years. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, please keep us honest. Please keep us accountable to the work we're doing. Share your ideas. Um, we have an Educator Empowerment Summit, summit coming up in July. Uh, we're going to be sending emails about that, so you're going to be able to register starting next week. Um, but really, the focus there is allowing teachers to tell us, what do you need from us? What do you need to help elevate the experience for every single child in your schools, in your programs, on your teams, um, so that we can help them share their greatness with the world as well? So it's a privilege, and I, I take that privilege uh, very, very seriously, and I appreciate the opportunity. All right, from there, I wanna jump into just a few definitions so that you all kind of understand where we're going. Some of you have seen these definitions before. Empower, to provide the motivation, resources, and confidence to a person or a group so that they grow stronger and more confident in controlling their life and claiming their rights. What's important about the word empower and empowerment is that we are not coming in and trying to fix any community. We're not trying to fix any student. We're not trying to fix a situation. We're here to provide resources, encouragement, motivation, so that people have confidence and groups have confidence to become stronger and more confident so that they can go out and control their life and claim their rights. There's no fixing to be done in this space. That's not the point right? Empowerment is the point. So from there, we jump into inclusion, the act of creating an environment in which any individual or group is welcomed, respected, supported, and valued as fully participating members. Inclusive environments embrace and respect diversity. Um, I was working with a team uh, a few weeks ago, and we were talking about um, all of the differences that each of the teammates brought to the experience of that team. 
And there were a million different uh, varieties of humans. Um, if you were to like get into the nuts and bolts of what our interests are, what our backgrounds, um, what do our parents look like? What are the cultures that we came from? And I had to sit and remind all of them that I guarantee there's one thing that each member of that team brought in common. Only one thing that I could think of that I could guarantee, and it's this, that every single person there had made a mistake. Every single person there needed someone's forgiveness and grace at some point. And so as we build inclusive environments, um, we need to remember that, that we need forgiveness and grace in certain in instances, and others are going to need that same, um, that same grace extended. And so the more that we can keep that in mind, the safer our conversations become, the safer everyone's contribution uh, becomes, and the environment becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. So um, it, it ended up being a really amazing conversation uh, with this group of young people and the, their coaches. Uh, so I just I wanted to kind of share that with everybody because it, it it struck home and struck a chord with with all of it, all of the people involved. All right, from there, empathy, the the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. So um, as I was kind of digging into this um, this idea of empathy, and I'll, I'll showcase this in a minute in some of our resources, you know, but it was always in my mind like walk a mile in someone's shoes. And what I learned through the work that we had done for this toolkit is it's not really about walking a mile in someone else's shoes, but it's truly about walking next to others, uh, walking beside them, supporting their journey. Um, we can never truly understand anyone else's journey, um, but we can walk beside them and support them. Um, and so you'll see how it, that builds itself out. Um, kindness, a feeling that causes a person to act in a friendly, generous, and considerate way towards others. I mean, we need more kindness in this world. Um, every single day, there's examples of the opposite, um, but every single day, there's a million examples of kindness. Let's elevate those. Let's let's empower those acts of kindness and really shine a light so that our students can see those as examples of how to live. Um, and you know, it's it's one of those things. My wife is a dietitian, and she always says, "Hey, what's the one thing that a person can do to improve?" their overall eating and become healthier eaters. So here's a nutrition lesson for you, I guess, too. The one thing that any person can do to improve their eating is this, eat more fruits and vegetables. And here's the logic. If you eat more fruits and vegetables, it's going to crowd out all of the other things that maybe you, quote unquote, shouldn't be eating. And I feel like if we just focus on kindness and we allow kindness to take a, a, a huge um, a part of our of who we are, our being, our focus, our, our consciousness, it's going to drown out all of those other things, right? So it's not like, hey, let's let's remove these negative things purposefully one by one um, because we know that's painful and it's frustrating and it's really difficult when there's all of these other things throwing these negative things at us. But if what we can do is just explode kindness in our lives, it's going to drown out those other things. Um, and I just, I, I was thinking about this analogy um, a couple of weeks ago during a conversation, and I just, I, I felt like it was, um, it was important to share. Um, this is an interesting one that we developed last year, um, and it, it really centers, uh, and it, it came out of the work all around microaggressions. And I'm going to use the same thing as, as I use for kindness. Micro affirmations are the opposite of microaggression. So they're little small acts and behaviors um, that occur in order to provide support, empathy, respect, empowerment to other people. So here's the biggest one that I can kind of think of. When you're having a conversation with someone, and it's an important conversation about who they are as a human being, about what they're going through, about what their dreams and hopes are. Put your phone away, put it in your pocket, turn it off, put it somewhere else. And if it buzzes, if you get a notification on your watch that tells you something's happening, ignore it and be present in the conversation that you're having. I think in this day and age, that's the most, and it might not even be a micro affirmation, maybe a macro affirmation, affirmation, right? 
but it's it's this small act that truly has a massive impact on the person who's trying to connect with you in that moment for whatever reason. So we're going to build out this as well. So all of the resources center on those topics um, that we're going to showcase. Um, and they all uh, are housed um, on the toolbox. So I'm going to click on here and it should take me. And then I am actually going to send this through the chat. So that link in the chat uh, is the landing page for all of these resources. I'm going to I'm going to give you um, a really cool stat that can counteract some of the negative stats that you had. Um, and we get, you know, negativity that comes into all of our worlds. Right. But since we launched this um, last year, We've had more than 60,000 downloads of these resources, 60,000. So 60,000 educators, coaches um, have clicked on the resources, hopefully printed them off, used them with those teams. So let's say um, every coach clicked on this, uh, uh, clicked on three resources. So that's only 20,000 coaches that clicked on these. Multiply that by what, 25, 50 students, and you can see the massive ripple effect that we have. So my ask based on that information is share this link with as many people as you can share it with as many coaches as you can with as many teachers, parents, whoever you think can utilize the tools that we provide in the toolbox um, so that we can have an even bigger effect um, moving forward. So as you kind of go through, you'll see we've got inclusion vocabulary tools, an empathy journal, micro affirmation uh, tools, as well as a new resource for this year, a kindness streak builder, um, which I'll show you in just a few minutes. So you scroll down, you can see a little bit of a description of each of these things. Um, and then you'll find buttons that provide the resource. So I'm gonna click on the very first thing that's listed, uh, the kindness streak builder. So there's been tons of science, um, tons of uh, books written about the power of streaks and um, it's based, you know, uh, that's what my Apple Watch is based on. How, you know, can I fill my rings, um, you know, every day uh, for a month? Can I complete these challenges that are all based on whether or not I'm keeping my streak? Um, uh, my wife uses Duolingo. She has like a million day streak or something like that. Not really a million day, but lots of days. And she is very concerned if she ever thinks she's going to lose that streak. So psychologically, it makes a lot of sense for us to use the same concept uh, for creating more inclusive environments. And the best way we can do that is just kindness. Um, so what we're asking our students to do here is just one small act of kindness each day for 30 days, of course, every day after that. Um, but they can mark off each day that they've completed it. They can print this thing off. They can put it on their bulletin board. You can keep it in the classroom. Um, maybe it's just a team thing, right? And so um, if you have this in your locker rooms and one player commits one small act of kindness, you get to mark this thing off. And if, if your team gets through all 30 days, um, maybe there's some sort of reward at the end, uh, or maybe you just celebrate having the whole street thing built out. So we've used these for a lot of different things in the Believe in You world, not just kindness. And I will tell you, students um, students respond to it. Um, it's, it's really pretty cool to hear uh, from teachers and just letting us know, hey, I had the street builder, kids didn't want to break the streak. Um, now, the other thing we do is we go in and we say... Um, Hey, if you, you don't really know what to do today, here's a list of different things that you can do. Now, here's a little secret. I'm just going to throw this out there. Um, I used artificial intelligence to create this list. Of course, I curated it after the fact. Um, but I went in and I said, create a list that Elton John would make um, about all of the different small act of kind, acts of kindness that you could do. Um, and I have no idea if Sir Elton would actually approve of this list. It's totally artificial intelligence. Um, but I just thought it was kind of a timely and interesting way to create something like this. Um, but again, little things, um, you know, give flowers to somebody as a gift to brighten their day, teach someone a new skill or hobby, help someone carry groceries, um, offer to help a friend with a task that they find challenging, um, share something inspiring or informative on social media. Lord knows we need more inspiring, positive stuff on social media. Um, so again, 
just a, an idea list to generate. Um, it's a great place to start conversations with your students. Um, but the reality is there are a million and one different ways that your kids can demonstrate kindness um, and be able to um, be able to fill out this this particular tool. So that's the first one, our kindness streak builder. Next one is our inclusion vocabulary kit. So I'm going to click on this. Um, if you've been following me and the work that we've done through the open program for a while, you'll know that academic language is one of the most important things that we can do for our students. And we have tons and tons of dis different academic language tools that you can use. Why not have academic language as it, um, it as it's involved with inclusion? So what we've done is um, we actually worked internally with our pride council and we came up with a list of words that we felt were important for all human beings to understand when it came to inclusion. Um, and then we went through and we mindfully created uh, very specific definitions uh, that we felt were inclusive for everyone to be able to read and understand um, why these things are important. So this is our index. It kind of gives you a glimpse of all of the different words that are included in this toolbox. And then as you scroll down, you will see um, that we've given you uh, a few things. Number one, obviously the word, the definition, and then below the definition, there are some guiding questions that you can utilize to have a group discussion, a team discussion, or a class discussion around this specific word. I will tell you um, that our leadership words that we provide, our inclusion words that we provide, one of the really cool things that we've heard back from coaches and teachers on is that they're printing these things out and they're posting them maybe one day at a time um, throughout a course of a month, or maybe they're posting a couple at a, a time uh, over the course of a week. And they're just allowing these things to be up in hallways or on bulletin boards where students gather. They don't say anything about them. They just put them there. And organically, conversations are taking place. Sometimes those conversations are really cool. They're very positive. Sometimes those conversations are tough, they're challenging, and it's a teachable moment for that teacher or coach to step into. Um, but the reality of the situation is just by these words being present for your students, they will sink in, they will become uh, a part of their experience, uh, either on your team or your club or your class. Uh, and so there's a lot of different ways that you can use these. Um, you saw all of the different words that are there. Uh, but again, we need, in order to have these conversations, these, these meaningful, fruitful, important conversations, we need to develop the vocabulary, right? We need to develop the tools so that we can have these conversations, provide grace when grace is needed, accept grace when grace is needed, and at the same time, move our community forward towards a more inclusive space. Um, so uh, I, I love the, the, uh, the, the vocabulary words. Uh, this is honestly by far the most downloaded resource uh, that we have on here um, and can be really, really powerful. Uh, the next one are empathy journals. So if we click into the empathy journal, you're gonna see that this mirrors our five-day journals that we provide on believeinyou.com. So there's a few different ways that folks are using five-day journals. Sometimes it's just a weekly dose of journaling, and it can be done in between units or at the beginning of a, of a season. Um, there's a million different ways that these journals could be done. Um, other times, teachers are using these um, over five weeks. So they're going to do them every Monday or every Thursday um, each week for five weeks. And in that way, they make it all the way through um, and get through all the different concepts. Up to you how you use it. A lot of folks are using these as they're intended to be used as journals, um, but then a lot of folks are just using these as discussion guides. So if they if they don't have the space where they can really get down with you know pen and paper and have kids do the journaling, they just pull these out and they put them on a clipboard and they use each day as a different discussion guide. And then they have these group team discussions that are that are truly meaningful. So I'm going to go through um, and just kind of showcase each day has a different theme. Um, so day one, the theme is walk beside me. 
and this idea that humans are really designed, right, to live in community. Um, community is an important part of who we are. It's an important part of maintaining our mental health. Um, and so what we want to be able to show here is that empathy is our ability to walk beside others as they experience the best and most difficult emotions of their life. You know, sometimes um, in this in this world that we live in, we find it hard to celebrate with others when good things happen to them. All, and it's almost easier to go on the attack. Um, and, and when bad things happen, um, you know, really kind of get the needle in there. And this is, this is why social media can be so dangerous for kids, right? But let's really talk about our ability to celebrate um, as well as be there for others when when challenging things happen. And so um, this is a description of all of that. Um, and it also gives those uh, talking points and writing prompts uh, so that students can really kind of think through and process what this means in their own lives. The next one, see my emotions. Um, so we all, again, have these core emotions that really prompt us to action. Um, so if you see my emotions and you know that I'm angry about something and that anger is really there to help me set boundaries for the people that I love and for my community and for myself, be supportive and, and help me utilize that energy and act it on it in a positive way. Remember our empowerment rights? Let's not, let's not diminish anger and tell the people around us, oh, you shouldn't be angry. Let's unpack it. Why are you angry? What does that mean? What does your anger look like when it when it gives you energy for action? Let's use it for something constructive. Let's use it to help ourselves and the people that we care about. Um, and in order to do this, we truly have to be able to see the emotions of others um, and be able to help help those folks work through it and uh, go from there. The next one is talk with me. Um, and so again, Let's make sure our number one, we're connected. We're putting our phones away. We're not distracted by the things around us. Um, but then let's remember to uh, focus on the other person and not necessarily about you. And, you know, so many times we can we can have a reflex or we're triggered by someone's um, challenges and it, it might trigger something in us. And that's all valid. But when that person is in front of us, we need to be able to kind of compartmentalize that triggered feeling and be there for that person. And then you know what? Maybe the next day, maybe a few hours later, um, maybe we need to, to talk with a person in our support system because we were triggered and that's okay. But in that moment, let's be with the person. Let's make sure that they feel heard. Let's make sure that there's a connection when we're talking. And so um, how, how can we continue the, the conversation with clarifying questions, um, and just statements to let those folks know that we're truly listening uh, to what they're going through. So again, let's unpack this for our kids with these prompts. Um, take a stand with me. What does that look like? There's three important ways that we want to make sure our students understand um, that we can we can take a stand. So one of them is to to speak up. You know, phrases like "this needs to stop" um, are really important. Um, sometimes it's not appropriate or the person that's telling us these things don't want us to speak up in that moment. Um, what we can do though, is we can encourage anyone who's been hurt to get help, to help them identify safe people that they can go to, safe resources that they can utilize to help them uh, get help. And then finally, the third is to just be a friend, um, to make sure that you let them know that you understand and, and hear uh, what they're telling you and that you're there for them. You know, trauma is one of those things that we're still learning so much about. But one thing that we do know is that it's much more dangerous when it's experienced alone, right? That's when trauma becomes its most dangerous. So although there could still be um, long lasting effects of someone who's traumatized, uh, we as a friend, as someone who cares about that person can really go a long ways in helping the healing process get started if we just let them, that person know that we're with them. That's it, that we're by their side, that we're not gonna go away, um, that we'll be there with them. 
So let's unpack this for our students using the journals or, or somehow um, during discussion time. And then finally, um, let them know um, that, that I will walk beside you for specific reasons, um, but also you need to understand that building this support system and being part of a support system ultimately is going to help you get the support you need when you need it. We're all going to need support at some time in our lives, right? Um, so every time we tell a friend, uh, a classmate, a colleague that, look, listen, you deserve help. You deserve support. You deserve somebody to walk with you. Two days later, when you need support or a month later, when something tragic happens in your life, or something challenging, or you've been hurt by someone, um, it's going to come back. It's 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 a little bit of like support networking karma. Um, that's why community is so important for human beings, right? So this is the um, this is the empathy journal. And again, where are kids going to going to learn this? Um, many many kids learn this in the home. Many kids don't. Many kids have opportunities to practice this because they're a part of a family community that's dynamic and supportive, um, and many kids aren't. So utilizing these resources for everyone um, is, is just going to, um, again, create that safe space, that important place uh, that kids feel as if they belong and is built for them. All right. That's the empathy journal. And then finally, our micro affirmations. These are just fun, silly posters uh, that, again, you can put up uh, and utilize, um, you know, with your students. Uh, we have heard, you know, these these have been really, really strong in middle school, um, high school. Maybe they're not as uh, strong in terms of the clicks. But the reality is the content is what it is. If you want to copy and paste this into a format that's awesome for your seniors in high school, go for it. And honestly, seniors in high school might be even more apt to, to embrace this than sophomores in high school. Um, but that's like a whole other story. The reality is all of this is just important information we need to remember. Micro affirmation, smile. Smiles are contagious. It's one of the simplest micro affirmations we can provide to the people around us. Um, and you know what? Sometimes when you smile at somebody, it truly has an impact that we don't even know. Um, so smile more. The next one, make eye contact. This one is so frustrating with kids today, right? Because they're so used to just doing this, right? They're, they're making eye contact with their device that they don't really feel comfortable looking up into each other's eyes sometimes. So um, let's, let's help our kids understand how important eye contact can be. Um, and sometimes it's just that simple reminder, letting them know um, that that's an important thing that they can do when communicating. We've talked about this already, um, but this is probably the poster I've seen most kind of pop up on social media around these. Um, and I've, I've been really um, uh, excited to see. I've walked, walked in a couple coaches' offices, and this one um, has been printed out and posted right in the coach's office. Just this one, like put your phone away, be a part of the conversation. Um, so uh, that one's always really useful. Verbally acknowledge emotions. It's one of those things where we can just, again, say, look, I see you're having a hard time. I'm really sorry. Um, is there anything that I can do uh, to help you with whatever the emotion is? Um, but that verbal acknowledgement is there. So those are the four tools that we have um, in our inclusion toolbox. Um, they're all there for you um, to download anytime. Again, I pop the link uh, into our chat box so that you have those. Again, please, please, please share that link. Uh, share, share it on, in your social media networks. Uh, you know, share it in your school emails, wherever you think teachers can benefit from this. Um, I'm going to stop talking for just a minute and see if there are any questions that came through on the chat. I'm not the world's greatest multitasker. All right. Uh, just the only question I see so far is on certificates, and it looks like uh, Saxon answered that one. So yes, um, there's a link right there. You go in, you can request your certificates of participation right there. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through. 
So I'm just going to kind of take a, a, a minute um, to share how, again, how grateful I am to this community, uh, the folks that regularly come to our webinars, that utilize the resources that we build. Every time you click, every time you share, um, every time you take the resources from Believe in You or the Open Project and give them and put them in the hands uh, of teachers, um, the more we can benefit the kids around this. As a reminder, all of this is done as um, as a public service of BSN sports, uh, U.S. games, um, and varsity brands in general. Um, and so we utilize, every time you register for one of these, every time you click on the resources, we share that internally with um, all of our senior executive team so that they can really feel good about the, uh, the impact that we're making. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for being here today. Um, I will see you again on another webinar very, very soon. And until then, have a wonderful summer. You earned it.